Have you ever heard of the Uncanny Valley? I've been obsessed with it for years. See? The Uncanny Valley refers to this effect where the more human something looks, the creepier it gets. For example, let's say a company is designing a robot that looks like Angelina Jolie. No matter how lifelike they think they can make it, it wouldn't be a perfect representation of a human being. We would be able to tell the difference. There might be a slight delay in the eye movement, or her hand movements might be too mechanical. Either way, as realistic as she might look, she still wouldn't be human. The company would actually do better to make her look less lifelike, because the more human-like she looks without actually being human, the more repulsed we are likely to be. I first learned of this effect because my sister likes dolls. She's a few years older than me, but her obsession didn't diminish with age. I had the great misfortune of sharing a room with her. She collected various kinds of dolls, mostly porcelain and ball-jointed dolls. Have you ever seen a ball-jointed doll? If not, count yourself lucky. Some of them are absurd, with disproportionate eyes and faces. They're not so bad. Some of them look like miniature human beings trapped in a cocoon of glass. Uncanny Valley, indeed. I used to have nightmares about those dolls when I was very young. I'd dream that they were crawling towards my bed. Only, I couldn't get away. I was paralyzed, watching them struggle towards me with their stiff joints, their glass eyes, unblinking and unseeing. They'd tear open my skin, and with their little hands, claw inside as I screamed and screamed. I begged my mom to let me have my own room, or to even share a room with my brother. She told me, There's nothing to be afraid of. They're just dolls, and they can't hurt you. I think she wanted me to overcome my fear, but her plan failed. Instead, my fear of the dolls grew into a full-blown phobia that started to spread to other parts of my life. I noticed that other humanoid things started to bother me as well. Mannequins, clown figures, statues. For a long time, I lived in fear. My parents couldn't take it anymore, and that's when they brought me to a psychiatrist who introduced me to the Uncanny Valley effect. Understanding my fear would help me to overcome it, she said. I guess she was right. It took a long time, but I finally got over my phobia. Oh, I still don't like dolls, even all those years later. But I won't, usually, get nightmares after looking at one. I can handle mannequins, although they make me uneasy. Overall, I guess I've got a good handle on things. Well, I did. See, the reason I'm telling you this at all is because something's changed. And even I myself don't understand what's happening. It started a few weeks ago when I got up for work one morning. Have you ever had one of those days where you look in the mirror and you don't really recognize yourself? I mean, it just hits you that that face staring back at me is me, but it doesn't feel like you, and you're left feeling strangely disjointed and out of place. Well, that's what was happening to me. But the feeling didn't go away after blinking a few times to clear my head, no. I stood there, staring into the mirror, feeling that there was something off about me. I didn't have time to do much that morning, late for work as I was, so I left the apartment in a rush, hoping that the feeling would fade as the day went on. Unfortunately, I wasn't the only one to notice it. Hey Lizzie, did you change your hair color or something? The cute guy from the shipping department, was staring down at me with a sort of puzzled expression on his face. 
God, he looked beautiful even when he was confused. He was the kind of guy that makes me want to eat sushi off his abs, and he'd never really looked my way. But here he was, talking to me. Me. I dispelled my stalkerish train of thought, as I tried to come up with an answer. No, why? I asked, cursing myself for sounding so terse. In reality, I was just nervous. Ah, you just look... different today. You look nice, though. He flashed a smile so bright that I almost forgot about the events of that morning in the mirror. Almost. But not quite. I expected everything to have gone back to normal the next day. Maybe I was just looking tired the day before, and Tanner, shipping hunk, was just being nice. The pieces didn't quite add up, but if I squished them together to fit well enough to be believable, so I didn't really think about it much more. Until, that is, the next day, when I looked into the mirror. Something had definitely changed. I didn't have work. So I sat in front of my mirror like a narcissistic douchebag, wondering what on earth had gotten into me. This was quickly becoming an obsession, and I searched for what was different. The answer was not immediately apparent. But after an hour of searching, something jumped out at me. My eyes. There was something strange about my eyes. My eyes have always been a kind of dull gray color, nothing to write home about, but now they were darker somehow, and the color had seemed to spread out further than it had before, encroaching just a little into the space where I should have seen white. The changes were so subtle I almost didn't notice it, but it was there, staring me in the face. As soon as I made the discovery, other things began to appear in my vision. My hair was darker, but only a little, and thicker as well. I looked carefully at my roots and they seemed more... defined, if that makes any sense. Like they hadn't been grown, like they had been placed there. My skin looked clearer, if only just a bit, and the color even more. My nails, which had always been prone to cracking, were smooth and perfectly translucent. It was almost like looking at a doll version of myself. Dolls. Uncanny valley. My heart skipped a beat. My mind went into overdrive and I started to panic. I was halfway to my cell phone, intent on calling my therapist that I hadn't actually seen in ten years when I managed to calm myself down enough to think. You're being ridiculous, my voice of reason said. You're stressed out and you're imagining things that aren't there. You are a human being. Look, you're moving, breathing, panicking, thinking. All hallmarkers of humanity. You're fine. Everything is fine. I decided that the slightly condescending voice had a point, and I put down the phone. It would be better to ignore the problem. Maybe then it would go away. As if that's ever worked. Only, it didn't go away. Other people began noticing. I had a few more comments like Tanner's. People wanting to know if I'd dyed my hair, or been on a diet or started wearing new makeup. I just smiled and tried to excuse my way out of it. But soon the comments stopped and people started acting differently around me. Well, people tried not to be around me in general. I noticed that everyone seemed to be avoiding me, giving me strange looks. Whenever someone was around me, they looked unsettled. Like something about me made them uncomfortable. Uncanny Valley. The voice of fear whispered to me. It's getting worse now. All of my human imperfections are being smoothed away somehow. And everything inside me is starting to feel duller. 
I don't laugh anymore, or smile as much. It's not that I can't. My skin isn't turning into plastic, and my eyes aren't turning glass. It's just that whatever was inside me that liked to smile, or cry, or scream, has started to turn wooden. Even if I'm all flesh. I'm certainly not a doll, that much I know. But I'm starting to think I'm not human anymore, either.